Okay, hey everyone, this is Five. We're checking out Busted Metal. This is a game I've not played before. Uh, we're gonna give this a shot and see what we can give for feedback here. Got the game page open. It says, Welcome to Busted Metal. This game is all about car racing and battling and is currently in development. The in game controls are W accelerate, A turn left, D turn right, S reverse slash brake, Shift is boost. Space is fire weapon, Z or X is change active weapon, and escape is show menu. <clears throat> and it says, note when you are in the air, you can use the arrow keys to rotate your car and do tricks. Okay, so you're saying arrow keys as in not WSD, right? So that is like a two-handed deal, I'm assuming. I'm assuming you didn't just write that wrong. Uh, <laughs> so that'll be interesting, I guess. Um, rotate your car and do tricks. So I, I, I assume that's sort of something vaguely Rocket League-esque. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I've got the game open here. I've not seen anything past the screen. This is what you see when you first run the executable. We are in borderless window mode. Um, I don't see any options or settings or anything uh, immediately here. Now, this does have the appearance, I, I believe this is being developed for a uh, mobile, as a mobile game, which is why, it, you know, it kind of looks like a mobile game at the moment, turning with these big buttons and everything. Um, that's my assumption. We do have this, I guess we can click on. This is Mystery Man, Cursed Terse, Transmission is Front Wheel Drive, I almost said Forward, <laughs> that's not what that means. <clears throat> All right, we got Crazy Pete, Camaro. All right. Oh, you know what? Let me, uh... Oh, what? What is that sound? So I'm gonna... I forgot, I usually put down the, the game audio a little bit here, so I'm gonna do that. This is gonna be a lot lower, but there is... Oh. I unfocus the game. Okay, wait, let me crank up my volume here for a second. Okay, yeah, it's just the engine sound. Okay. Let me put that volume back down. Um, yeah, so it seems like we got some sound effects. My, uh, yeah, that's how I typically have the volume level. So it seems like the volume the sound effects is, is quite low at the moment. I'm not sure if that's going to change in game, but um, usually people make their, if anything, the volume of sounds and stuff in their games like way too loud. So it's kind of weird to see something that's like maybe just too quiet. Um, I don't know why this this is bouncing in my face here. What a body wheels boost bumper. So this is all. Oh, see that's not so quiet. That's kind of it's very audible. <laughs> So I'm assuming this is just cosmetics. Oh, that's fun. Wait, that makes the whole thing move up and down. That's cool. Oh yeah, it looks like the uh, the wheels you choose change the... Uh, wait, does it change the stats in the top right there? It doesn't look like it. All right, yeah, I'm... I'm well... <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Oh, so that's like reflecting the sky, I guess. It looks weird in this screen because we like I, I haven't seen a sky like that, but I guess it's just, or maybe it is. Wait, no, that looks like this. Uh, what is that called? A reflection map or something? Looks like it's taken from somewhere else. <clears throat> um, yeah. Any case, I'm guessing this is all cosmetic only. Um, but we do have the stats up here, so I do wonder if maybe the developers thinking about playing with, uh, maybe playing with having different things affect the actual stats, racing stats here, which I don't know if is, is a good idea or not, but it looks like we at the moment have like the same things for everything. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know which... Uh, oh, so, it, okay, it occurs to me. I don't want to spend too much time on the screen here. I know it's uh, dragging on, but um, when you're selecting the car, I guess we're not playing yet, so it's not so important to see the stats here, I guess. But it might be nice just to have that be visible like while you're selecting the car here. I think that'd be information that the player might be looking for. Let's go ahead and click on play. Um, we got battle racing versus bots, time trial, testing area. Should I do testing area? I am play testing. No, let's start with this. Interesting that battle is on the left and racing is on the right. Um, I guess we'll start with this one. Now I am curious if the gamepad is supported. I do have mine plugged in and I'll, I'll try that out. Um, this is definitely a game I would want to want to use a gamepad for. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, very slidey. Okay, interesting. Right. So. Oh, it's just a random bomb there. I'm just I'm just playing with the handling at the moment. I know there's kind of like a time limit. I'm just gonna kind of ignore a lot of stuff, but it's it does seem like it slides a little more when you let off the throttle than it does when you're holding forward, which is interesting. Yeah, it looks like you can turn a bit harder that way. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more slidey than I'd like. Um, My initial impression just based on the feel feel of it, I, I think I I kind of like the way it feels when you let off the throttle and you turn and the way it kind of slides, but oh my gosh, that's a lot of sounds. The uh, oh, I'm getting hit by all sorts of stuff. Can I pause? Okay. <laughs> the, the way it feels while you're holding the throttle forward and turning to me feels kind of a little off, I think. Um, I think it make more sense if it didn't slide like that. Um, effectively, I mean, you can, of course, you can manage your turning rate without needing to lose traction. And make it turn, turn as rapidly or not as you need. Um, I guess some. Oh, that's me dying. Okay. Thanks to Crazy Pete. All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hop over to quit. I'm going to click on play and I'm going to click on the testing area because that's probably that's like what I'm basically doing at the moment, right? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean in terms of the, the actual sliding that's kind of cosmetic, right? In a way. Um, mostly. I guess there's some collision element there too, but yeah, I feel like I'd like to kind of be in control. Oh, okay, so this is not... I can do the flips in the air with the WSD. I don't actually have to use the arrow keys. So that's good to know. Um, okay, yeah, it looks like the arrow keys are just the mirror of the WSD. <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like I'd like to have kind of control over whether my car is sliding or not while I'm turning. And so... That would just kind of make me feel more in control. And I think that the, you know, the simple way to do that. Hey, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> the simple way to do that is, uh, you know, don't have the car slide unless you you let off the throttle or, or however you want to do the that initiating the slide kind of thing. But let's go ahead and focus on other things. Uh, looks like shift is our boost. That's just a wall. We got spacebar and then Z and X. Okay, so yeah, I don't like having to reach for the Z and X while my fingers are on WSD because I have to take my fingers off of the driving controls in order to reach those. So um, yeah, we definitely like to see you know something else. If, if I'm gonna have to stick with keyboard controls, you know, I could use my right hand or something. Like use, um, you know, K and L or, you know, just anything else so that I don't have to take my hands off those 
that uh, WASD, that would be helpful. Uh, let me try the gamepad real quick here. It looks like... So it looks like we just have the left thumbstick is tied to the WASD, so technically I can drive around with it. It's, it's kind of goofy. Um, but yeah, I don't have any of the other buttons, it seems, so... I guess that's a no-go for now, but yeah, that would be an obvious thing to do. Um, I can only guess what these... How many of these do I have? Am I shooting coins? Oh, there's like a meter. It's just recharging. Okay. Those, those particle effects. Oh, they ricocheted, what the heck? Okay. Oh gosh, no. The camera keeps flipping around backwards and I'm just trying to like make little adjustments here. Maybe it's a little bit too eager to do that. Yeah, I, I would consider making it so that you have to like back up for like a second before the camera decides to flip around like that. Just because like I'm finding that I'm just trying to make like a little bit of adjustment here and there. Like I don't really need to see behind me, but the camera is like very eager to go backwards like that. Oh interesting, you can you can turn left and right without having to use the throttle. Which is like not not very car-like, but it's it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, oh gosh, that is pretty annoying. Okay, yeah, sometimes the, the little particle effect kind of goes off sideways or whatever. Doesn't look like it's... Alright, well... <clears throat> yeah, apparently this thing you just have... Just like a weak weapon, I guess, and you just kind of always have it, and then other things are stuff you pick up, I, I presume. I'm not sure if you can make it over like little, it's probably too big, that's not little enough of a bump. Oh gosh, yeah, so I, I really feel like the, uh, just kind of the basic turning just feels pretty out of control, like it's not as tight as I would expect. Um, first of all, it takes like, it takes a bit for the, between when I hit, when I press the button and the turning to actually happen, it has to kind of like accelerate into the turn, so it's not very responsive, and then like when you let off, it also kind of takes a bit to stop again, so. It's kind of like there's a lot of inertia in both ways, which makes it feel quite a bit more difficult to control than I think it needs to be. Um, so, yeah, I can't really see where I'm going at the moment. So I think, yeah, I think the car just kind of automatically tries to line the wheels to the ground, which is interesting. Um, Oh, that is not... Okay. <laughs> that is not a ramp, despite sort of... Okay, well, maybe it was meant to be. I don't know, there's something weird with the collision there. Oh, you can kind of spin out pretty easily, too, if you just want to turn around. Pretty manageable though. Oh, that's break a little interesting. I got a heart. Bleh. That sounded crunchy. So this does recharge. So does this run out though? Oh, so it I shot three of them, I guess. Wait. Why did this one... Okay, not sure if there was like a little bit of a bug there. You saw that like I, I used up the rocket things that I had and then it then 
once I used it up, it switched back to this this pea shooter thing. But then, like the pea shooter was was on empty for a bit. I had to wait for it to recharge, even though I haven't been using the pea shooter. So I don't know if that's um, maybe that's a little bit of a bug. If it was intentional, it's a little bit counterintuitive, I would say. What the hell? <laughs> oh, is it trying to land back on the uh, the half pipe there? I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and, and try some actual game again. Go ahead and click on quit. Click on play. So, I guess... Oh, we can pick the car here. Okay, I was gonna say. It's a little weird. But yeah, again, so we're gonna want to see the stats of the cars when we're when we're picking the car for trying to play a game for sure. So you want to fit that in here somewhere. Um, obviously this is very unfinished, but difficult to easy. Let's go to this one, I guess. All right. Oh gosh, it's, it's much harder to steer than I feel like it is going to be. <laughs> My word. Okay, whatever this is. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch. Again, it's hard to reach that. Oh, okay. So that's that's what that does. Is a little bit eager to shift around, isn't it? So this is sort of like a mortar, but like... I don't... Oh, can you just ram people? Does that work too? Busted Cass and Bear. Give me help. Yay. Ouch. <laughs> it's like the crowd reaction because they thought I was doing a trick by... Oh, switch. Okay. It's hard to use that one because they can run away pretty quickly. Wait, which thing am I... Oh. oh, that's like a homing thing. Okay, I had the same like sound and visual as this one, so I... I got a little confused there for a moment. Oh gosh, I wish the camera didn't flip backwards like that. Oh, that's a uh, not good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. Am I? Oh, I'm back. Ouch. So I got an apple. Isn't that? A different thing that had <laughs> that had that same effect, that area of effect, whatever you want to call that. Uh, gosh, it's really hard to switch the weapons. I keep hitting the C key, I'm, I'm reaching down there, it's, it's so much easier to, to hit C. Bonk. <laughs> it is satisfying when you hit somebody, you just ram them and it makes that nice thunk. <laughs> what the hell? Did it just... It's, it's like you are number one and I just immediately blow up, that was interesting. <clears throat> I think, um... Because <laughs> it must have just been coincidence that I got blown up at the end. Is that right? Or does it just, do you just randomly explode when you win? <laughs> I don't think so. But I guess it was just like right after the time ran out or something. Okay, that was interesting. So, um, yeah, apart from what I already said about, you know, the... Steering is kind of wonky, uh, and this, the switching 
the buttons you have for switching weapons is kind of awful in my opinion. Very easy to fix, obviously. <clears throat> um, it seems like it's... Because you got a, a lot of weapons that are kind of homing and stuff, and... So it's hard to imagine, like, where... How are you going to avoid the attacks from the other players and stuff, you know? I have played some of these car battle games like a long time ago, you know, back back in the heyday when, when they actually made these games on, you know, PlayStation and N64. Um, you know, I played a couple of those back then. I don't really remember that they necessarily had a good answer for that either. Um, or how they may have differed from this. In that regard, it's hard to... Hard to think how that's going to work, but you know, that's going to be a, an element of the skill expression as you... Of course you want to kill the other cars, but you also need to be able to survive yourself, and um, if you don't want it to just feel random or feel out of your control, then generally you'd want to have some way to avoid damage yourself while also dealing damage. Um, And I imagine positioning would be an element to that, and I do think we have like a mini map that's showing the locations of the cars and stuff, right? So spicy. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah, so we got a map in the top right. I would love to see, um, you know, make these triangles instead of or even little car icons, you know, to show some directionality of these rather than just a, a point so that you can see the direction that they're driving. That would be a big help, I think. <clears throat> um, because that, you know, again, that'll help with the idea of positioning. So if you're thinking maybe, um, yeah, so like that guy's chasing me down. If I can tell which cars are, are you know, pointing towards me, then that gives me an idea of like when I need to get out of, you know, I don't want to be in, in front of them if they're going to have the things shooting at me, right? So I, I guess that would be the the primary thing I could imagine that would be where that skill expression comes from with regards to avoiding damage from other players or NPCs in this case. <clears throat> um, and yeah, I guess I would just be careful about like too much homing stuff, you know, like stuff that maybe stuff that like will automatically shoot behind you and, you know, track, track enemies and stuff like that, or stuff that would shoot really far and home into enemies. Um, I haven't played enough to really wrap my head around how, how many different types of shooting things you have, but it seems like you might have some stuff a bit like that. And... Yeah, so with regards to that idea of avoiding damage, you kind of have to, I think, design the weapons around that so that, like players can avoid damage from this type of weapon. So I would say something like, if you want something that shoots really far and kind of homes in on enemies, you could have something that, uh, you know how in Mario Kart, like when, when you have shells chasing you down, there's usually some kind of indicator that... that that's coming, right? And so for instance, like the red shells, I believe they make like a tone that you can hear while they're flying up behind you. Um, and technically it's possible to, you know, do things to avoid the damage from those. So it's like you can hear it coming and you can respond to it. And then, um, you know, there's, there's some means provided that you can avoid it. So something like that I think would make sense for something like a long range homing weapon, because Without that, it's kind of like you could just be like shot from across the map and and um, you know not have any clear way of avoiding that damage, and that would kind of not feel good, I think. So something like that, uh, I think that makes sense from a design perspective. Why does this feel so different? I feel like the handling is feeling a little different. It's because I'm on grass. It's a grass designed to handle differently.
I don't know. But, um, yeah, and so in regards to, I, I think there's a gun that kind of just shot, kind of tracked enemies around you and would, like, shoot to the side or, like, behind you and that kind of stuff, and I'm not sure how you would balance that with regards to avoiding stuff. Okay, this thing just kind of shoots that in front of you. It does hold in a bit. A fairly sensible amount. And then this is that mortar type thing. So this is kind of oh yeah, see that that thing that I just shot is what I think is. It seems like that's something that's going to home in from a long distance, right? So something like that is what I would I would consider having that that element of um, telegraphing it to the other player, then maybe they could like steer really hard right at the right time or something to avoid it. You know what I mean? That kind of thought process, I think, would make sense. Okay, switch to this thing. Oh my gosh, how did I die already? Okay, um, yeah, so sometimes this happens in games where it's like you die, but you, <laughs> for me, I, I see this sometimes, you know, I play test a whole lot of unfinished games. Um, so sometimes I'm playing something and, and I die and then I'm like, oh, I had no idea that I was in danger of dying. I thought I had more health, you know what I mean? So um, that generally indicates that there's um, you know you can improve the communication to the player of like how much health they have left and stuff like that or or when they take damage sometimes sometimes the game doesn't really give enough feedback about the damage you've taken um, when you do take it so like some things might happen and, and you end up taking damage but you don't really register it you know that's something I've seen quite a bit as well um, so there's probably probably some stuff you could do to make that a little bit clearer, I think. I know you have the, the health in the top left here, which I'm not I'm not really looking up there all the time. I, I am sit, sitting relatively close to my screen, so that also affects sometimes like like the closer you are to the screen, the less you can kind of see the corners unless you like specifically look up there with your eyes, you know what I mean? So sometimes sitting back a little further can help. And you know, maybe that's different on a mobile device or whatever. But um the other thing is like if you are low in health, for example, um, it can be really helpful to to visualize that some way. Like maybe uh, you can have like a sound effect that plays, or you can have uh, certainly make the car look a certain way. Like you know, it's smoking or whatever, and there's all sorts of stuff like that. You can you can indicate um, even if you're not like super low. Sometimes if you're just kind of like in the middle or something, you can have a little bit of feedback in in the car's appearance or something. Um, make it really obvious. Well, there's all sorts of ways to do that. <clears throat> but other than that, I'm not really even sure what happened. I guess I just got rammed. Um, I wasn't really, like I said, I wasn't really looking at my health and paying attention to it. And, uh, but yeah, I think in, in general games that are well designed, it's like you don't really have to specifically check your health in order to have some idea of where you are with it. You know, it just gives you enough feedback that you can kind of track it more naturally. That's this thing. So I'm <laughs> I do wish the icons were a little different. Like they kind of maybe looked like they might just be placeholder, you know. But um, it'd be nice if they kind of looked like what they did, you know, so I could keep track of them a little bit better. Because I don't really know which thing does which. It's hard for me to remember. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, interesting. So I did try to like break and turn, and that didn't really work. So I don't think I've done that before. Yeah, so the problem is it's trying to do reverse, I think. As soon as I press the S key, it's like trying to go into reverse mode. <laughs> this is kind of goofy. That might be something else. 
I mean, it, there's probably not much you can do about that in this kind of game, honestly, when you just kind of get crammed into, you know, like sandwiched between two random NPCs and you just get blown up. Um, uh, there might not be much you can do to avoid that kind of thing, but um, yeah, so I'm going to quit this. I like how it's nice and quick to like go between, you know, different modes and stuff. <clears throat> Like that was very fast. But yeah, so my expectation is if S is supposed to be a brake, then I can brake and turn. If I'm driving and I press to the right and then I press the brake, like it's going to the left. Because it's trying to go into reverse mode, and in reverse mode, of course, your left and right is, is inverted. Because that's how cars work, but that's like after you've already stopped and have started going backwards, you know? So I think what you want to do is... is um, You want to distinguish between braking and reversing. So if you're traveling currently and you press S, then you want it to do braking. And then after you've stopped, then you want to go into reverse mode, right? Because at the moment, it's like you're trying to go into reverse mode while you're still moving forward. And that doesn't really make sense, especially if you're trying to do what I did, which was try to brake while turning. And you just kind of don't, your car just kind of stops making sense for a bit there. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and try a race. Time trial racing. Let's do versus bots. We got merchant cubes. I guess we'll just try the first one. Maybe you try a different car. I don't know what the stats are of these again. Kind of like the looks of the, the motorcycle. It looks so different from the other ones. Uh, not sure if these, well, cars can look however they want, I guess. It's nice to have variety. I was gonna say maybe they don't they don't all fit together, but no, I forgot that there's a boost. How, how does boosting work? Is there um okay? There's a little meter. It's hard to look at the bottom meters and stuff and uh, pay attention to the racing at the same time. Oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> this feels sloppy, holy cow. Okay, the boost doesn't automatically recharge. That's good to know. So if I go over this, I accelerate, but then... Oh, the boost is back. Well, what, what causes the boost to come back? Does it just... You just wait long enough? And do you have to go long enough without using it? Or is it like as soon as it's not full it'll recharge after a certain amount of time even if I've used it recently I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing much I guess I'm in first and nothing is approaching me um, yeah I'm, I'm kind of staring at the uh, the meter with the, the shift key here so yeah I kind of wish that was a little clearer how that worked oof um, there's not much you can do with a mobile game but I'm thinking like it is a little bit annoying if you go over like a little bump like if you're trying to if you're trying to take a turn and you go over like a little bump then your car kind of goes into the the airborne flip mode like as soon as you go airborne because it's sort of your natural reaction is just like keep holding left or right because you're turning even if you go over like a little bump and then you're just kind of expecting okay you go over a little bump and then you'll land again and keep turning so my um, you know, it's kind of natural to just keep holding the, the button to turn, but then you kind of end up, you know, doing weird stuff in the air that you don't probably don't want to do. Um, which is why I think games like Rocket League have like, you know, you have to hold the button down in order to go into, you know, change the controls into rotating the car and stuff. So I, I think if you can kind of separate those controls, there's a benefit to that, so you can avoid that issue. But um, on the other hand, if you are aiming for a a mobile game, you're quite limited in how many types of controls and stuff you could do. Um, maybe you could do, you know, different ways for a PC versus a mobile release if you are targeting PC at all. 
I mean, obviously this is on PC right now, but <clears throat> um, yeah, and you could do kind of like what I thought in the beginning, or maybe you could have uh, WSD and the arrow keys be different things. So the WSD would be your steering and the arrow keys could be your air rotation and stuff. And that would make sense. And uh, maybe like the right control and shift could be for changing weapons or something that would that would simplify that a lot because like I said earlier um, my right hand isn't really doing anything so that would be a lot easier than the Z and X keys I think I don't know what this one even is oh it's a mine okay Jeez, that just keeps going. That that seems <laughs> kind of strong. Um, I guess we can't really expect the you know a lot of balance and stuff at this point of the game being in development. But um, I would like to see some kind of indication of how many things I have left of of the different weapons when I'm using them. I guess I have to avoid my own mines too, don't I? <laughs> That's kind of funny. There's a guy right coming right up behind me. Um, switch. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty pretty straightforward. still pretty awkward with the controls but um, in terms of racing I mean there's not um, it's not much in the way of mechanics and you know most most racing racing games have some kind of uh, you know fun thing about going around turns and and you know drifting or some some other mechanics and stuff or this seems a little bit more straightforward um, In terms of that kind of thing, obviously there's a lot of weapons and everything as well in play. <clears throat> but yeah, I think um, just in general, the biggest thing for me, uh, apart from some, you know the controls I mentioned and some stuff about the feedback of various things, um, is just the the basic handling. I think is what I would focus on the most because that's like the most important thing most fundamental thing of, of this type of game really so I think you could tighten that up a lot and that that alone would uh, be the thing I think would improve the experience the most because there's definitely room for improvement there in my opinion so I would focus on tightening that up a lot and um, yeah and you, you do have this this element of, of how your steering kind of changes whether or not you're holding down the throttle when you kind of slide a bit more so you can you know you know get more interesting controls out of that kind of thing but um yeah the basic steering just doesn't uh feel uh in control i think in the way that i would expect so that's my my major opinion there um oh you can uh you can use the mouse on this that's interesting <laughs> okay You know, only other thing I think is that, uh, you know, the obviously the presentation in general is quite rough at this point, but I think that the the sound effects could be spruced up a lot. Um, but yeah, it's all work in progress. I think that's probably enough from me. So hopefully this was a useful video for you. Did I? miss anything too important here i guess we have time trial um obviously i could play more of the tracks and stuff but i feel like it's going to be a pretty similar experience uh yeah i don't really feel like with the controls not being as tight as i hope they would i don't feel like i'm really optimizing for racing 
you know, I, I feel like I'm more just focusing around kind of getting around the track rather than finding like the tightest line around the track that you would kind of expect from a racing game. You know, that's kind of the the idea behind racing, right? That's how you optimize the game. Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be the thing I think is going to be the difference maker there. But let's go ahead and finish up the video. Hopefully it was useful for you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.